now it's time for another Meeple Madness Review with your host, Taylor Underwood. Hi everyone, and welcome to another Meeple Madness Review. Today, we're going to be talking about Dixit. That's right, Dixit. This is a party style game for three to six players and plays in about 30 minutes. This is a very popular game when it first came out in 2009 and 2010, and it is still rated in the top 100 on BoardGameGeek.com. So I want to find out what makes this game so good. So let's open up the box and see what's inside. Dixit. Alright, now it's time to take a look at the components and see what you actually get in the box. Of course, with any game, you have a rule book. Now as you can see, it looks pretty thick. But actually, it's printed in eight different languages. So you really only need one page. Here you see in the box is the score track built in. And this I have not seen in any other game and is quite inventive. And the artwork around it is actually really nice. Each copy comes with six rabbit meeples. One in the six colors a player can be. And these are placed on the score track to keep track of how many points each player has. As far as the component goes, they're kind of nice. They're cut out well, they're solid wood, so they'll last. And, let's face it, it's a cute little bunny. Each player also gets vote tokens. These are numbered from 1 to 6. As far as the component goes, they're quite nice. They're well-built cardboard and actually quite good quality. Since this is a card-based voting game, it's important that we have cards. So let's take a look at what these cards are. Each card has a painting on them. Most of them surreal. So here we have a woman with two men as earrings. I know a lot of girls who would love that painting. We have a little island inside of a teardrop. I have no clue what that is. So as you see, each painting is actually quite nice and could mean several different things. So that's pretty much all the components you get. It's not really a component heavy game. You have an inside score track, six meeple bunnies, a bunch of vote tokens, and a lot of cards with very surreal and very beautiful artwork. This probably has some of the best artwork I have ever seen in any game. Now it's time to figure out how to play Dixit. Each player gets vote tokens equal to the amount of people that will be playing the game. Here we're going to be doing a four person setup, so they would get numbers one through four. Each person will also be dealt a hand of six different cards that they will be using throughout the game. The player who is the first person is called the storyteller. As storyteller, they look through their hand of cards and they secretly pick a card that they would give a clue to. Now if that clue is too cryptic and nobody picks it, they won't get any points. However, if they say too much about the card and everybody picks it, then they don't get any points either. So let's say that I'm the storyteller and I'm going to pick this card. And then I would give a clue about it. That clue can be a word, it can be a sentence, it can be part of a song, it can be a sound, it can basically be almost anything. So the clue I'm going to give is the day the music died. And the reason why I picked that, because if you look under there, there's music notes sitting in the snow with the little boy looking out the window at them. So in my mind, it's the day that the music died. So I'm the storyteller, and I lay out that card face down. And then everybody else takes a look at their hand of cards, and they place a card down that they think would match that description. Now I set this up for four players here. The storyteller then takes the cards and shuffles them up, and then lays them out so that everyone can see them. So remember, the clue is the day the music died. So here we have four good cards that all match the clue pretty well. 
But remember, this one is mine. So, then everybody else votes to see what card they think is the storyteller's card. And just for the sake of continuity, I'm going to number these cards. This is not necessary and is actually not in the rules. But something that I like to do is to keep everyone make sure that they know what card is numbered what. That's an optional thing. It's not necessary, but you can do it. So let's say that the yellow player here, they take their vote tokens and they think that it's number four. So they're going to place theirs down. Green thinks it is three. And red is thinking that it's one. So you flip over these tiles and you match them up. There's a three, there's a one, and there's a four. Then I say as the storyteller, this is my card. If somebody guesses my card, they get three points and I get three points. Now, if everybody guessed my card, they I was not cryptic enough. So I would get no points and they each would get two points. And then if someone else chose your, your picture, so let's say this card was chosen by red. Red would get one point for each person who voted for their card. So red would get one additional point here, and green would get one additional point here. Now note that you cannot vote for your own card, and the storyteller can't vote at all. So, so red would be in the lead with four, blue would have three points, and green would have one point. At the end of the voting round, each player gets a new card so that they always have six in their hand. And then the storyteller shifts to the next person and they pick a clue and a card. And that is basically how you play Dixit. So what is good and what is bad about Dixit? I really only have two problems with this game. One is that the score track is in the box. Although it is very inventive, that means that you need to have this big box somewhere on the table. And since the little rabbit meeples don't have a solid foundation, Odds are, they're going to slide, because you have six hands in and out every single round, so if someone is accidentally going to bump the box, throwing off everybody's score. It's not really a big problem that I have with the game, but it's a real problem. The only other issue that I have is that there's 84 cards in here. If you continue to play with the same people over and over and over, the cards are so vivid and so visual that you will remember the clues behind them. But those are only minor problems. There are some, also some great things about this game, and that is, one, it is so visual. The cards, unlike Apple to Apple, where you're reading everything, it's a picture, and you can interpret the picture however you want, which ups replayability. And since we are visual people, that adds a lot to this game. The mechanic is simple. You can pick up the game in five minutes, and you can be playing another minute later. So overall, what kind of a rating would I give Dixit? Well, it's a really light game, but yet it is very fun. And that's all that really matters is, is this game fun and would I bring it back to my table again and again and again? Well, the answer is yes, I would. But it's not the best game I've ever played. So overall, with everything involved, I would have to rate it 4 out of 5 meeples. Thank you for watching another Meeple Madness review. I'm Taylor Underwood, and feel free to like, to share, and to comment as much as you want. And until next time, I will see you at the game table. Here comes Peter Cottontail, hopping down the bunny trail. Hippity hoppity happy. Oh, hi Farmer Joe. Hey, what are you doing to my care patch? Uh, nothing. I'm just getting my fix. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Looks like I'm getting a stew for dinner.